In this short lesson, we're going to discuss stair rules. So to get started, let's create a new project based on the architectural template. If you're using Revit 2014, you can click the architectural template link on the left, or you can go to the large R in the upper left, hover over new, and click project. Again, the template that we want to use is the architectural template. Go ahead and click OK. Now, stairs in Revit are automatically calculated. For example, Revit will calculate your rise and your tread dimensions. How it knows how to calculate those are based on rules. Those rules reflect what your local building code would state those rules should be. So before you start to design different types of stairs or other elements within Revit, you may want to check your building code and verify the rules and settings in Revit reflect what those codes say they should be. But to see where those rules are at and how they're currently set in Revit, let's first start a stair command. So to start the stair, let's move your mouse to the stair tool in the circulation part of your ribbon and just click stair. It doesn't matter what type or method of stair you use in this example, just simply click stair. Now you see the ribbon changes and all the tools and different options are there for the stair command. For this example, what I really want to look at are the rules. Over in the property area on the left side of your screen, I'm going to move my mouse to that area. I can see the stair that I'm designing with right now is the assembled stair, 7 inch max riser, 11 inch tread. Now that's just a name, but the name sort of depicts what the rules are. So keep that in mind if you're duplicating and creating new stair types. Click on the button Edit Type right below that stair. What will open up now are the type properties, and we'll look at this screen a little more in depth in a subsequent chapter. The rules, though, are listed in the top area under Parameters. I can see several rules are applied here, and that will dictate how the stair is actually created. For example, you have a maximum riser height of 7 inches. So if we had 10 feet between floor 1 and floor 2, every 7 inches would create a new riser, or step if you will, and that's how the number of risers is calculated from level to level or floor to floor. You also have a minimum tread depth, meaning the tread cannot be any narrower or shorter, in this case, than 11 inches. Now, there are also calculation rules for calculating slope. Most of this is automatic, and if you click on the button for that, you'll see that a lot of this is grayed out. You also see the various settings for the riser height and tread depth are grayed out on the bottom as well. You could override this, use your own stair calculation for slope. Typically, though, you'll leave this set as is and just change your riser and your tread variables. Go ahead and click OK. So this is the primary area where you're looking at these rules that govern how the actual staircase is being designed. Go ahead and click OK on your type properties. And then to cancel or exit out of the stair command, simply click the red X on the ribbon. We're not going to save any of this, so yes, we want to cancel. Up next, we'll look at different stair and railing components. 